Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So today's video, I'm going to be doing a get ready with me with a lot of first impressions. Um, it's almost a full face first impressions. So um, if you guys want to see what I think of everything that I tried out, then just keep on watching. Okay guys, let's dive into this get ready with me first impressions. I'm going to start off with my sample of the Too Faced Hangover Primer. I have not tried this and I know everybody has tried this except for me probably, but I just got this yesterday. How cute is this little sample? And so yeah, I've been wanting to try this out so bad. Um, I know I'm probably going to love it during the winter time when I'm super dry. It says it has coconut water in it. Um, you're going to see in this Get Ready With Me, I think I have quite a few little samples that I'm going to be testing out in this video. So let's try this Too Faced primer. I've been obsessed with the Becca um, Backlight Priming Filter Primer lately, so it's kind of nice to finally like switch it up a bit. I already have my brows done because um, I don't have a brow product to try out. But I feel like I'm having an off brow day, so don't even mind them. They're not being good to me today. This feels really nice on the skin. It kind of feels like a moisturizer. I'm not sure if this gets tacky or not, so we'll see, but it feels really nice on the skin. I wanted to get a new concealer to try out for this video too, but I didn't. There's so many, oh, it feels a little bit tacky. There's so many um, products that I want to just try already, and I wanted to do a first impression, so that way I can just use them over the weekend so yeah so next I've been saving this little sample of the Laura Geller cover locked cream foundation this came out this year so it's not a super old foundation it's relatively new I have the shade medium and that's why I've been saving it for this summer so that way I could um I'm sorry I'm just seeing if my face feels tacky it does feel a little tacky um, I've been wanting to try this out and I've been waiting till the middle of the summer so that way I'm nice and tan to match the shade. But I don't feel like I got that tan this summer. I did get a little bit tan but not as tan as I have in the past. So I'm just going to go ahead and use it. It may look, yeah, it looks pretty orange and dark. But maybe we can even it out with some uh, concealer. So wish me luck. Let's see how this goes. Um... I have like pink and yellow undertones, so I always use neutral tone stuff because, believe it or not, it does end up looking pretty orange on my skin sometimes. Um, so it is kind of hard for me to find the perfect shade. I'm going to put a little bit more. It looks really thick. I probably put too much. Let's just see how this blends out. It kind of has a makeup-y smell, if that makes sense. I'm trying to think of when this foundation came out. I'm not really sure. I only put a little bit and it has really nice coverage. I'm not sure if this one claims to be full coverage, but... It's blending out really smooth, too. It's blending out easily. I don't think it's too, too dark. It's not as dark as I thought it was going to be. Hopefully it doesn't oxidize. It's a little bit like orangey undertone, but I like the way it's blending out. It feels nice. I just don't like the smell of it. It smells like kind of, not perfumey, but kind of. I don't know. I don't like the smell. Hopefully after I set it, you can't smell it anymore. I'm glad I put this on with the beauty sponge and not a brush because I think I added too much. And I feel like I'm looking a little bit pumpkin-y. On camera it looks okay, but in person it looks pretty orange. I hate doing my brows because I hate trying to go around my brows. I feel like I get foundation on them and I mess them up. But we're going to just roll with it. Yeah, okay, so it smells. The smell's getting on my nerves. But it did cover nicely. I feel like it looks a little bit heavy on the skin, but not too, too heavy. So I do have this bag full of all the new products that I want to try out. Not all of them are from Ulta, but both the primer and the foundation are from Ulta. So I'm going to put on some concealer real quick. I can't find my peach 
um, LA Girl Pro Concealer. So I'm going to use the orange one for today. It is a little bit dark, so it's driving me nuts that I can't find my pink one anywhere. Next, I'm going to go in with my Maybelline Fit Me Concealer in the shade Light. And I'm going to use this to go over the orange. I'm just taking the excess and putting it on my chin and around here just because the foundation is a little orangey and I'm just going to try to disguise that a little bit. So next I'm going to add a little bit of highlight before I add any powder products. I did finally get a sample of the Cover FX um, drops and this one is in Moonlight I think. So I've been wanting to try these out since forever. I've swatched them in Sephora and they almost felt like dare I say too metallic, which I never thought I would say, but they did almost seem a little too intense. So I don't know if I should just drop it straight on my skin or you put it on my finger. See, like it looks super duper metallic. I'm wondering if I should blend it out with a beauty blender. But look how pretty that shade is. That is really, really pretty. I've been wanting to try these out so bad to see how the formula was and to see how they blend out on the skin. Let's see. I think with your finger they're more intense and the Beauty Blender is definitely softening them up a bit. Beauty sponge, whatever. It's definitely softening it up a little bit. This shade is really, really pretty. Look at that. That is so pretty. I wonder if it dries down or does it stay moist? I don't think I've heard anyone mention that. It's just glow everywhere. I'm not like really into liquid glows that much, so I never ever use them, but maybe this will get me starting to use them. I have a couple um, highlighter drops from Baby Bat Beauty, and I've used them a few times and I really like them. I want to try them out as like a primer so I can be super glowy with my foundation but I haven't tried that yet but yeah these are similar to the baby bat beauty ones that I tried okay this side did not blend out as good this side looks smoother I think I really like these I'm just curious to see if they dry down all the way I'm gonna set my under eye and my whole face with this Kat Von D translucent powder I usually use the petal powder, but since I don't know if I'm going to like the way my makeup comes out and I might wash it off, I don't want to waste it. So, I'm just going to use this everywhere. I really, really like this powder. It's super finely milled and it goes on really nice. I didn't mean to set over my highlighter, but I think you can still see it. It's just not as intense since I set it. Okay guys, the reason why I wanted to film this video today is because I cannot wait to use my new Jaclyn, How Jaclyn Hill palette this weekend. I'm so excited and it is so, so pretty. So I did already go ahead and swatch every single color in this palette because I was trying to figure out of what kind of look I want to do today. And I think I have something in mind, but I'm not too sure. But, I mean, these shades are so pretty. They're all pigmented. They all swatch really nicely. So I can't wait to see the way they perform on the eyes. I do have the little card thing right here. So I'm going to be trying to say the names as I use them. But I don't know. Hopefully I don't lose this card. I really hate that it's not written on the palette. I know everybody has already said that. So I think the first shade I'm going to start off with is Creamsicle. This orangey, mustardy color. Alright, going in with Creamsicle. Let's see how this goes. I think the shade range that Jaclyn Hill came up with is so pretty. I feel like there is um, some shades that could have been left out that make it a little bit like too many of the same type of shades. Like I would have liked to see a really um, bright like shimmery orange shade and maybe a deeper um, matte orange shade. There's like seriously like on the top row those three pinks in a row and you don't need that many you know, pink eyeshadows in one palette. And then there's a few matte brown shades that I feel like are pretty sim similar where I would have liked to see, you know, maybe a matte orange shade instead. But overall, the palette is gorgeous and I really like her vision that she had for the palette. All the warm colors with the little pops of fun colors in the bottom. I think she did such an amazing job. 
So this is building up and blending out beautifully. So I like the way that looks. I'm gonna deepen it up a little bit with this shade Mocha, which is this brown shade right above the black. I zoomed you guys in. I don't know why I wasn't zoomed in for the eye, but look at that orange sickle color. It's really pigmented and really pretty. So I'm going to keep this in the crease. I don't want to bring this up too, too far. Um, and then I'm going to go back over it with creamsicle to blend it out and keep the orange pop in there. I feel like creamsicle has some depth to it. It looks light in the pan, but it does go on a little bit deeper. So I feel like it's going to be more flattering to more skin tones since it goes on. Um, a little bit deeper than I thought. They're blending together nicely. The brown is a little bit hard to blend out, but not that bad. I feel like it's just because it's a deep brown, they're a little bit more difficult to blend out. There. That looks okay. So, it's not like the best brown and it's not the worst brown that I've ever used. So now I want to go into this green shade in the shade Diva which is this shimmery green shade right there. It's the deeper one, so let's go into Diva. And I'm gonna put this on the middle of my lid and um, the outer part. So I'm gonna leave maybe like a third or a fourth of the inner corner blank and fill in the rest of the lid with this shade, which is gorgeous. It's going on so pigmented and beautiful. I'm not getting any fallout on my face yet and it is a deep shade so that's really nice. This shade is gorgeous. Yes. Look at that. That's with a dry brush. Look how pretty that is. Wow she nailed those shimmers. And the tone of this like I was so happy to see some greens. Green is like one of my favorite colors and you don't really see green shades in palettes. And this one has a little bit different of an undertone, so it's not just straight out green, where I feel like it's more wearable. Um, for people nervous about color, to me this is a more wearable green shade. Um, but even if it was bright, I would have worn it anyways. I love green. Just the color green in general. So that's nice that it's going on this pigment on my on my eyelid, and my eyelid is set, so it's not even like a sticky base. So I'm going to just without putting any excess product on my brush that I used mocha with, I'm just gonna run it along the crease to kind of soften any lines in my crease. Okay, so the inner part, no, let's work on the outer part first. So on the outer portion, I'm gonna go in with this really deep shade and it is called, oh my God, no, I just dug, I just dug my brush or something into this when I wasn't paying attention. Oh, I wonder how I did that. I didn't even see how it happened. I just totally dug out that shadow. That really sucks. I mean, I probably wasn't going to use that shadow as much, but still, this is a brand new palette. Ugh. Okay, anyways, I'm going to go in with the shade Grape Soda. No, Soda Pop. Soda Pop, and it's like a very dark purple. It looks pretty much black in the pan. On my hand it swatched black, so let's see how, well not fully black, but let's see how it goes on the eyes. I'm going to just keep this on the outer portion. Kind of looks black, but maybe because I'm putting it over the green. I just wanted to use the purple so that way the green would really pop since they are like opposite. I'm getting a little bit of fallout with that purple shade, but not bad. I'm wondering if I should probably powder my under eye. I'm going to put some powder on my under eye so that way I don't have a ton of fallout from that purple. It is falling out a little bit, nothing crazy, but I don't want it to mess up. All right, I'm gonna just take my time and blend this on the outer V in just like a little V shape. And I'm not gonna bring it up into the crease, I'm just gonna keep it really tucked in there in my crease. Just try to blend it along my crease line and not bring it out. 
and lightly blend the green into it. I'm going to go back into the shade I used for Mocha and kind of soften that a little bit. It's looking a little harsh. So I'm going to just leave it like that. A little bit smoky on the outer V and I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. I'm going to go back in with cream circle and help blend that all out. I'm not blending it down. I'm keeping it high because the orange with the purple and green is going to make a muddy color. So that's why I'm keeping the orange circle shade pretty high and leaving mocha in the middle as like a little brown like middle guy to kind of make sure nothing gets muddy. I'm going to add a little bit more of that mocha shade in the crease to just kind of keep that purple shade down a little bit so it doesn't muddy into the orange okay so now going into this golden shade it is called queen i'm going to put the shade on the little blank portion and bring it down to my inner tear duct wow this shade is really intense i'm not like a huge gold eyeshadow person personally like if I see a shimmer gold or a shimmer brown color in a palette, I usually skip over it. I like more um, matte brown colors and bronzy colors that are matte. So um, I did want to incorporate this one in the look just in case I don't end up using it that much. I don't know why I'm always drawn to other shimmer shades that are more maybe rosy, but I'm not really into like gold and bronze as much. Okay, that looks pretty, and I'm going to bring it down to my inner tear duct area. And a little bit on the inner tear duct, and a little bit right here on the lower lash line inner part of the eye. So now I'm just going to sit here and lightly melt the gold into the green. I'm not going to blend too much, just a little bit so it's not like a harsh line. I'm going to go back in and just lightly touch up that green shade in the middle just in case I lost a little bit of it in all the blending that I've been doing. So now I'm going to move on to the lower lash line and I think I'm just going to smoke it out with that purple color. Yeah, I think I'm just going to keep it with the purple I don't want to add too many different colors to this look, so I'm going to start where the gold leads off and line underneath my eye with the purple. Alright, let's continue on the lower lash line. I'm going to take more of Soda Pop. I feel like I keep wanting to call it Grape Soda. And I'm just going to run it along my lower lash line. I'm going to take a little bit of the shade Beam, which is the yellow toned white shade. There's like two shimmer shades that are white, but one has more of a yellow undertone and the other one's more of like a, I don't know, it's more frosty. So I'm going to take the more yellow undertoned one and I'm going to pop that on the very, very inner tear duct part. So that way it kind of fades a little bit brighter right here and then goes into that deeper gold shade. And then underneath the purple, I'm going to blow out a little bit of creamsicle mixed with a tiny bit of mocha um, right underneath the purple. I'm not going to blend them together because it's going to get muddy, but I'm just going to put it just under it to kind of help smoke it out and help the colors just kind of come together. But I'm not going to like blend them together because it's going to get weird. A little bit of that powder, the Kat Von D powder, is dusting away as I do this, but that's okay. So I'm going to do that, and then right underneath the purple, really closely, I'm going to go in with some of that mocha shade, and put that in between the purple and the orange, to kind of blend out that purple shade a little bit. So now that I'm done with the Jaclyn Hill palette for now, and I'm done smoking out the lower... And I'm done smoking out the lower lash line. Let me see what else I got in here. So I have mascara to try out. I did throw a couple eyeliners in here just in case I wanted to do a wing. But I'm thinking I'm just going to throw on lashes and maybe skip the wing this time. I have tried out the yellow one of this and I really like it. These are the NYX Vivid Brights. Um, eyeliners and I have swatched them on my hand and they look super duper nice but I think I'm going to just skip those for now 
I'm going to quickly set my brow. I've only used this one time and it was in a comparison video. This is the Benefit Give Me Brow um, Eyebrow Gel. And I haven't used it since the video that I did comparing this one to the Essence one. So I don't even remember what I said about it or if I liked it. I'm just so obsessed with the Essence one. For eyeliner, I'm going to go in with this Thrive Cosmetics Infinity Waterproof Eyeliner in the shade... Iliana. It's like a purple color and I don't even know if this is still available but I did get it a long time ago in a gift bag. I should probably throw it away. How long do eyeliners last for? But anyways, um, and I never ever use it because I don't reach for purple eyeliners all too often. Let's dive into bronzer really quick and take a break from the eyes. So I have two bronzers. I have the new limited edition Rimmel Maxi Bronzer that I found at Rite Aid. It's a face and body bronzer and it just looks like this. And it's really cute. As you can see, I've already swatched it for Instagram. And it does have like a strong like makeup-y smell. And then at the dollar store I found this Beauty Benefits bronzer and this one's a little bit cooler toned and it swatches really nicely so I haven't tried it on the skin yet. I've been saving it for a video. So I think I'm going to try this one and then go in with a little bit of the Rimmel one on top. The Rimmel one seems super duper warm toned so I'm going to go in with this one first. It's a little bit neutral. It kind of reminds me of like the Too Faced bronzer, uh, the Chocolate Soleil bronzer shade. So let's see how this one goes. Oh, it's a nice color. It's pretty deep though. It's kind of like a, not reddish tone bronzer, but it's pretty deep. It's like a very brown bronzer. It looks kind of like natural skin type of color. Like if you were going to get tan, it has like those brown undertones. It's not orangey, so it looks pretty natural. Oh, I feel like it's really, really pigmented where you just need a little bit. like one little like pounce in there and it's like a lot of pigment. I'm going to lightly run it through all three shades and hope that it's not too 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 orange because I already feel a little pumpkin like right now. I'm just going to keep it back a little bit. It's pretty orangey toned. I feel like it's a nice summer bronzer. Because there is times when I want a little bit of an orangey toned bronzer, I'm not going to lie. Probably because I do have those a little bit of yellow undertones, so I feel like it looks nice. I'm going to try out this Essence Volume Stylist Lash Extension Mascara. It says 18 hours and it has lengthening fibers in it. So I'm really excited to try this bad boy out. Okay, it's at the other side and this is what my lashes look like. I feel like it's not super like separating or anything like that, but I feel like it is like thickening, so it did kind of go on thick. It's a little bit clumpy, so I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. I'm going to wear it throughout the day and see how I feel. Um, I changed my mind. It didn't feel really watery doing the other side. It kind of feels like a thick mascara and a little bit clumpy, but I will update you guys in a future video. I'm going to be trying this out and see if I like it. But it was really easy to get like thick lashes really quickly. This is like two coats, so that is pretty nice. So for my lips, I'm going to go in with this Wet n Wild Liquid Lipstick in the shade Sleepy Hollow. This is from their Halloween makeup display, and I haven't put it on my lips yet. I've only swatched it on my hand, and it looks so pretty, so I'm so excited to see how this goes onto the lips. I did do a lip swatch video and a first impressions of the other shades on the Halloween display, but I did unfortunately pick this one up um, after I filmed that video because not every Wet n Wild display has the black and the gray shade on it. Um, I found ones that have just like uh, permanent shades with four bright shades, and then I've seen a Halloween display that had like the bright shades with a black and a gray. Let's see how opaque it goes on. Yeah, it's opaque. This one's way more opaque than the bright shades. The bright shades are a little bit streaky. Oh my gosh, this one is beautiful. If you see this one, definitely pick this one up. This one is a lot better than the bright shades. It's like not streaky at all. 
this is the final look. What do you guys think? I think all the products worked out pretty good. My favorite thing is probably the primer, the Jaclyn Hill palettes, and the Wet n Wild Lippy. I'm impressed with it all. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. I will see you guys in my next video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. I do videos twice a week, so I will see you guys then. And until then, have a great day slash night, everybody. Bye.